Hello, my name is Brian Betteridge. The following videos are a collection of reflections on my time at Boise State University's Master of Educational Technology program. In each section, I will present an artifact I created for the program and discuss how it represents my understanding of the Association for Educational Communications and Technology, or AECT, standards from 2012. I will also discuss how these artifacts have made me a better teacher and how I might use this knowledge to help my colleagues. Hopefully you might find something helpful here too. The first AECT standard is content knowledge. My understanding of this concept is best demonstrated by a project I completed for EdTech 502 called the Virtual Tour of Literary Philadelphia. This is the virtual tour I created for EdTech 502. It is a literary tour of Philadelphia. I created this website from scratch using HTML and CSS. As you can see down here, uh, the CSS and HTML validation passes with no errors. Uh, it was interesting to learn how to code in HTML and CSS, especially how to embed things. Like for example, here I have an embedded Google map with a variety of literary landmarks in Philadelphia. Uh, many of them are the ones that are in the virtual tour, but I added some extras for little added interest. I also learned how to incorporate and embed Google Docs, which is an important part of my teaching. This link makes a copy of the Google Doc sheet, reflection sheet, for any user who wants to answer the questions. Uh, if you use the Rosenbach Museum entry as an example, I've also learned how to embed YouTube videos, which has become a really important part of my instruction as I use YouTube videos and embed them into Google Classroom and other documents in my teaching on a regular basis now. Um, so this is just an example of how I have learned to create um, instructional materials based on specific HTML and CSS content knowledge gained as a result of this course. I've also been able to use this information to help the school at large. I've used my knowledge of HTML, CSS, and WordPress to help members of the website team fix problems or add new features that make the school's site more accessible. I've really enjoyed it and I hope to continue that in the future. This artifact is an excellent choice for demonstrating my ability to use content knowledge such as HTML, CSS, and other web principles to create instructional materials and help others create instructional materials as well. One of the biggest lessons for me from the MET program is that educational video games don't have to be boring or explicitly educational. With some planning, you can find educational uses for popular commercial games that otherwise seem to have no educational value at all. This is the lesson plan that I created in EdTech 532 for learning independent skills through the commercial video game The Sims 3. It is designed mostly in this case for 10th to 12th graders, however it can be adapted for lower grades and it can even be adapted to use for any version of The Sims. For example, The Sims 4 or even The Sims Free Play mobile uh, edition on iOS or Android. What I really liked about it was that it, um, it, it addresses a specific problem that many of my students have, which is uh, social skills, life skills, and independent skills. Through this game and through the lesson plan as I've created it, students will be tasked with creating or, or cultivating different kinds of sims that are either happy, lonely, bored, uh, dirty, meaning they don't, uh, lack of attention to cleanliness or hygiene, lazy or sad, uh, and will reflect upon what that means to them, how this relates to them, and why these skills are important. Uh, so this was this is a great example of how I've learned to use uh, video games to enhance a specific content pedagogy, specifically for a life skills curriculum. The Sims 3 is a great example of this. When used in a targeted fashion, this game can teach students who struggle with social and independent skills and relate those skills to their lives. While I've yet to implement this in my classroom now, I am planning on using this lesson plan as a basis for an activity in my summer camp program. I'm also integrating Minecraft with the camp curriculum to help support STEM concepts and collaborative practice among campers. In the meantime, I've been able to use examples of video game narratives that have support for literary discussions, which has helped drive interest in the material. For example, the Odyssey is much more exciting to students when you can compare it to Super Mario Brothers. I've been able to enhance my co colleagues' experience in two ways as a result of this standard. First, I have been recently been asked to participate in a collaborative professional development with various area schools based on my studies in the MET program. 
I am currently creating a short presentation about the benefits and applications of commercial video games in a variety of content areas. This is important because I had never considered video games to have a legitimate use in the classroom, but Boise State has taught me otherwise, and my teaching is better because of it. Second, I have shared my ideas with the school's employability training and independent skills programs to help them address this important area of growth. As this lesson plan demonstrates, I have gained new understanding of how technology can be used to enhance content pedagogy in the classroom. The third AECT standard is learning environments, and for the assessing and evaluating indicator, I choose the relative advantage chart created in EdTech 542. This is my relative advantage chart. This was a particularly eye-opening experience because I had already used a few of these technologies to help create a more interesting learning environment in my classroom, but I really didn't understand why I was using them, what the advantages were, or what I should be expecting when they were used in the classroom. For example, I had easily been using Google Docs, EasyBib Noodle Tools, uh, Prezi, and even Goodreads uh, on a regular basis, but I had not considered, for example, how Google Docs can help students to independently identify spelling and grammar errors because it didn't have the same functionality as, Google, as Microsoft Word, for example. But through using some add-ons, I was able to help create a more uh, effective learning environment using these technologies thanks to my study of relative advantage and learning the advantages that these technologies would have in my classroom. I also learned that some of the applications I was using, such as Edmodo, were not resulting in the expected outcomes I would have preferred. This process prompted me to revamp how I use technology in the classroom. Rather than using technology just to use it, I started using it with a purpose and an outcome in mind. This prompted me to utilize Google Classroom more effectively and guided how I taught students to make presentations. Rather than use PowerPoint, I shifted to Prezi or Haiku Deck, depending on the assignment, because I determined them to be more useful for my students. As a result, I have seen stronger and more focused presentations with a higher visual interest, which keeps other students engaged. Plus, the students enjoyed using Prezi much more than PowerPoint. Without this assignment, I would not have made these considerations. I have also used these, these assessment skills to informally advise my colleagues during our weekly collaboration meetings. It has been useful for me to share my conclusions and make recommendations that can strengthen the educational experience, experience for all of our students. The fourth AECT, AECT standard is professional knowledge and skills. I am focusing on the collaborative practice indicator with my iPhoneography artifact. This unit design of iPhoneography was one of the most collaborative assignments I did in the MET program. I worked with a subject matter expert to help create some of the uh, portions of the report, including the charts, the learner descriptions, and even the learning context. The most important aspect, though, was the evaluation portion of the report. I worked with a subject matter expert to help refine the the unit and to give me some feedback, both formative and summative, but I also worked with a classmate who provided feedback and suggestions. In the end, I also worked with the same subject matter expert to implement portions of this unit in a week-long iPhoneography workshop at my school. Uh, it, the fact that I had taken the time to work with her and to put this together helped that program go much more smoothly. And it also, I was interested in how it helped build the bond between my colleague and I. At first, I thought that using a subject matter expert was to fill in any blanks of my own knowledge, but I now understand that an SME can introduce me to new angles of thought or new approaches. Collaboration is a significant focus in my school, as evidenced by weekly middle school collaboration meetings. Since this experience in EdTech 503, I have been more active in these meetings. I have also made my projects more cross-curricular. Now my yearly research project is done in conjunction with the ninth grade history teacher, and we frequently co-teach to convey historical principles and research best practices to our students. This collaborative experience with an SME has prompted me to collaborate more frequently and to use the knowledge of my colleagues to enhance my own instruction. The fifth and final AECT standard is research, and my EdTech 504 synth synthesis paper on problem-based learning is an excellent example of the ethics indicator. My problem-based learning synthesis paper for EdTech 504 is the best example of my understanding of the ethics of research and best practices when researching. The most important lesson that I took away from this was the uh, 
details of APA formatting, particularly the running head and the cover page formatting, but I also learned quite a bit about in-text citations, uh, which we can see I've, I, there are over 30 in-text citations in this paper, all of them properly cited and all of them implemented properly, but at the end I also learned quite a bit about the works cited entries and how to format them properly. I learned through my mistakes of capitalization, uh, which things should be capitalized and which should not be. Uh, and as a result of this particular assignment, I have a much stronger understanding of the importance of APA formatting, the mechanics of APA formatting, and this paper is an excellent example of that. As a teacher, this has prompted me to impose stricter formatting requirements for all writing, not just formal research papers. We use MLA style at my school, and I now require proper MLA formatting and citations for all writing, no matter how short. Rather than teach this mid-year, I have made this the very first assignment of the year and something we return to with each new assignment. My students have done a better job of researching as a result, and their arguments are stronger and more effective. In regard to my colleagues, this experience has made me share my own research findings more readily. If I read an interesting and useful article, I will email it to my fellow teachers with a short statement about what makes it an effective article or why they should read it. Sharing my own research has helped with my collaborative practice as well. Thanks to my own stronger research skills, my students are better researchers too. Taken together, these artifacts are just a small sampling of the lessons I've learned in the MET program, but the assignments presented here are the ones that have, the most, have had the most impact on me as a professional. I hope to use what I have learned to continue my education and seek more knowledge independently. I am grateful for the amazing experience Boise State University has given me. Thank you.